News First, Newsline with Faraz Shaukat Ali. And a wonderful morning to you. This is Newsline, live as always from the News First studios in Dalton Street in Colombo. And this morning we are here to pose a couple of questions to Mr. Krishmal Varnasurya. Very good morning to you, Mr. Varnasurya. Good morning, Faraz. Good to be here. Lovely having you here. Now then, Krishmal, uh, before we uh, get to the uh, meet the whole matter, um, the, uh, what is the state, the general state of affairs? What is the general ambience? Yeah. Good morning, Faraz. And, and thank you for, for giving me this opportunity. I was actually going to ask you yeah. uh, whether we couldn't talk a bit more. Of, of course, you talk about the constitution and, and everything else. Yeah. But on general state of affairs in the country, and may I just uh, start by saying in the morning, whilst I was driving to your lovely studio, uh, I was uh, watching the screen, uh, little screen, and there were two advertisements that caught my eye. One was, uh, there's a small man, young man, yeah. uh, hard-working level, able-bodied young man, throwing stones, yeah. and singly saying, uh, uh, Wodak, idea. we have a lot of dreams, but no way to do it. Mm -hmm. Then a man comes on and says, Malli, why don't you go and buy a lottery? Mm -hmm. Right? So you, uh, the the idea, idea is that well, you know, you don't need to work, you don't need to exert yourself. You wait for someone. This giving or taking mentality, right. the, that which is what I think transposes also onto a political arena, where we expect the government to give the politician to come and give us a, 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 a takaran sheet or a bicycle or a television before election. Hmm. So this, you don't need to work, you will get it from some. Right. Then on the other side, they showed in the morning on the morning show yeah. some South African man who has uh, been very innovative. Enterprising man who had tied a lot of helium balloons in a chair and gone up. Now, after discussing this on one morning show, they are saying, You don't do this in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is going to make it dangerous. Now, shouldn't we rather be saying, Look, uh, if you are doing something innovative like this, look after the risk factor. There is a risk factor. Mm. But are we not killing uh, public ethos, public mentality? My question is, on one side, we are saying young people don't work, sit there throwing stones at where girls are bathing, mm -hmm. and then go and buy a lottery in the evening and you become a millionaire. Mm. You don't have to work. On the other side, right? don't think, don't do anything uh, innovative. You but, know? but Sri Lanka has talent. Sri Lanka has Absolutely. a lot of talent. Absolutely. And, and what are we doing about building a national consensus to get to that dreamland that you and I want this country to go to? With now, the all yes, for example, if you, uh, uh, even uh, when I went up to Jaffna, um, I could uh, notice that um, at the, after the war, uh, you know, all sorts of schools have sprouted up, and lots of them are computer classes, computer this, computer that. So, you know, the Sri Lankan um, IT industry has talent. Yeah. And then... In Not just IT, everywhere. Yes. There's potential. Who do, why do you think when any Sri Lanka, or majority Sri Lankans go overseas and, and get employed, so now I, I can quote names who are people at NASA now. Yeah, All right. Yes. People who you know remember no yes. Gunupa, who who designed the the the, the probe yeah. that went on the pathfinder that landed on Mars and and, and collected samples. The the main design of that of that instrument was done by our own Sri Lankan professor. Yeah. So wh why is it that when Sri Lankans go anywhere else where there is potential for growth and they appreciate for what they do, they climb leaps and bounds. Indeed. What are we doing in our country to get us there? Because the potential is there. Indeed. And, 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 and therefore, it is slightly uh, disheartening uh, when, um, when you have... You're talking about uh, constitutions of the... <laughs> well, you have, it's slightly disheartening when you have the minister, um, Mr. Ran Vikramaratna, who we hold in high esteem. Mm. Uh, but uh, he's suggesting that uh, perhaps uh, work permits should be issued to all these people who want to come and work in the IT industry. Which people? Sri Lankans? No, foreigners. Oh, dear. Foreigners. Well, I, 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 you know, so so that's a little bit disheartening, uh, because it seems that they don't want to fix the problem. The problem is you must develop our own industry. Our our general psyche, our general sense that we as Sri Lankans, if 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 we actually, you know, now we talk of constitutions and protecting descent that we talk now how two thousand hundred years our history, the that history we must bring out to the national ethos and say, look, this is a country that even gave rise. 
to the rest of Asia at a time the, of our kings. Yeah. We are a country that found a system of irrigation, you know, the, 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 the step level of irrigation long before Europe even, the in comparative history, uh, long before Europe even knew of it. We are a nation that had sub water fountains up in the middle of a rock right on top through a system of pressurization long before Europe even found how to build a, uh, dig a hole in a rock. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if we are a nation of such greatness, why are we not using that ethos to make us a people yeah. that, that is going to secure Sri Lanka at, at, you know, at least, say, if not the miracle of Asia, at least half a miracle of Asia? So then, uh, I want to also um, uh, remind you and uh, our viewers that uh, the president, uh, President Sirisena, has extended the term of the um, Presidential Commission of Inquiry into the Issuance of Bonds by the Central Bank. Right. Got it all in one go, didn't I? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's apparently is he, uh, increased it by the term by six weeks, mm. um, which um, in my mind uh, I, I conjure up images of uh, Mr. Dapula de Oliveira and Yasanta Kodagara uh, jumping up and down because now they can uh, question the other people on their list, huh. or as many as they can. Apparently, there's 20 on that list, huh. apparently, okay? So right. I'm not influencing nothing here. Hey. But what I want to say is yeah. this. We're going to ask you, huh. from purely a layman's perspective, huh. we've had all sorts of people summoned to this commission. Huh. We've had Malik Samari Vikrama, whose role was the advisor to the... Prime Minister. Oh. We had Ravi Karunanayake, a one-time Minister of Finance, then Foreign Minister. Oh. We've had Kabir Hashim, one-time Highways, now Public Enterprise. Oh. We've had all of these people trotted forth at, in, before the Commission oh. and questioned under oath. Oh. You know, and so on. And it, it beggars belief that the line minister in charge of the subject of the central bank running with a singer, has been sent a questionnaire. We then treated in the press to some interview where the uh, printed media are quoting Dapula de Oliveira, who says that the Prime Minister, he considers a material witness and he will have more questions for him, as in the Prime Minister, than what the commissioners had. Mm. Now, this matter uh, is rather a serious matter. It is so serious that the Prime Minister deemed it fit to make a statement in Parliament uh, not even a month after the issuance of the bond, back, all that way back in March 2015. Oh. And it's so serious that the layman's perspective is, okay, obviously we'll bring the, the, the minister forward, the minister in charge. The former governor says, I don't know. Ask the Prime Minister. I, I only carried out his instructions. Mm -hmm. The Minister. And then the public are wondering, are left wondering, if not reeling, with this knowledge that their Prime Minister has just been sent a questionnaire in the form of an inter interrogatory. That's mm -hmm. fine. And they wanted the responses back in the form of an affidavit. Mm -hmm. Also fine. But there's Dapoli de Oliveira who's saying, listen, mm -hmm. I, I want to question. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Krishma, my question to you is, where, is there provision? Why would the Prime Minister make a compelling witness? Oh. Oh. Why? Yeah, well, What's uh, the legal part? Well, yeah, well, the part legal of part of it, as, as to why uh, Dapula and, and Yasanta wish to uh, examine him in, in evidence, is, is definitely a matter, because they, obviously they must be of the opinion that what the Honourable Prime Minister has to give in, in the way of evidence to this Commission it leads to a comprehensive evaluation of what the Commission is inquiring into. So those reasons are best known by them. But if you look at if you look at the warrant, Farah, obviously we must look at the warrant under the hand of His Excellency the President yeah. that establishes this Commission. Yeah. Now this warrant is very clear, we are, before we go into the area of speculation, the warrant is very clear. Yeah. Having appointed the Commissioners, His Excellency goes on to say authorizing such commissioners to hold all such inquiries, make all such investigations, all such, uh, into the matter that have been referred to, which is the bonds, yeah. as it may appear necessary and require you to transmit to me within a number of days, now that have been extended, uh, a warrant in a report 
under their hand setting out your findings. So yeah. now the commission has the duty of making all such inquiries and investigations that may yeah. be necessary. Then the, His Excellency goes on a step further and says, I do hereby direct. Yeah. Okay, I do hereby direct. It's a direction. Uh, to such part investigation inquiry into the that matter to be referred in the schedule as shall, uh, shall not be held in public and then I require and direct all public officers. Now this is important. Uh, the President, His Excellency the President requires all public officers and other such persons yeah. to whom you may apply for assistance or information. Yeah. Right? Assistance or information to render all such assistance and furnish all such information as may be properly rendered and furnished they have. Now, what is this warrant His Excellency saying? He is directing all public officers and as I have said that some time before, uh, I think on your channel, I can't see a, a, a bigger public officer than the Honorable Prime Minister because why? He is uh, holding a public office. And he is uh, what we refer to as Prime Minister comes from Primus Inter Pares, the Latin the Primus Inter Pares, first amongst equals. So, amongst those equal public officers in that parliament, he is the first, right? Now, he is under a duty by the head of state who has required by warrant to give all such information and assistance as may be necessary. Mm. So, indeed, if the commission were to think that we have something to inquire or information to elicit, from the Honorable Prime Minister, he is not, not that there is, you know, uh, by uh, Exmero Motu or by some, you know, by grace of my heart, will I feel I will uh, send some questionnaire answers and all of that. If the Commission requires the, the Prime Minister is under a duty to go and uh, render such assistance and give information as may be necessary. Mm. So I don't see any reason as to why, if the if indeed his evidence is required, yeah. as as you say, which has come out in uh, so many proceedings that people say that that uh, there were directions given by him or or, or his 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 uh, the the fact that some directions or some authority or some information that he may have given in this transaction. Uh, needs to be elicited in evidence. If that is placed in question, there is no reason why he shouldn't be summoned in evidence. But, but, uh, yes, and whilst you were saying that, well, what uh, crosses my mind is that Ravi Karunanayake was mentioned in, uh, uh, in evidence by another witness, and Ravi Karunanayake found himself before the commission. Huh. And, you know, later this information about uh, his... Um, a cash in the, not his, but cash in a safe in a business that he, his family is connected to, was found and so on, and who paid his rent and all that business. But here we also have a, a, a very, very important um, matter that's come up, which is that uh, there is an SMS sent to the per uh, person, Arjuna Lausius, who is at the epicenter of this whole thing. Uh, and his personal assistant, Steve Samuel, says, uh, makes reference to the H-O-N dot capital P capital M, HON P-M, uh, and he's asking for the minutes of meeting of some, some meeting that the Prime Minister's had uh, the, on the previous day or the, that day, oh. ahead of, the, of a bond that was to be taking place the next day. Oh. Now, surely, surely, that alone Mm. warrants uh, an explanation and uh, cross-examination by the uh, of the prime minister indeed i mean that, that's why i said if 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 it is if it is the belief of those soliciting evidence there as indeed the commissioners who are holding the inquiry that hon pm refers or is a likelihood that it refers to the Honourable Prime Minister, mm. then indeed he must be summoned uh, to give evidence. Indeed. I mean, there, there, is, there is nothing stopping that. Yeah. Uh, indeed, the, the warrant under the hand of Excellency the President is very clear. And that, that, that there is nothing, and also, you know, in the Constitution, although the Excellency the President had certain immunity, which has been watered down by the 19th Amendment. Earlier he couldn't be brought to court, even that had been amended by the 19th Amendment, yes. which, which we amended uh, just after the Apartheid government came. Yeah. Uh, the Honourable Prime Minister has no such immunity. Yes. So the Honourable Prime Minister, indeed, if he, if he, as you say, if Hon PM is expected to have been referred to him, there is no reason that he should not give evidence. Uh, and subsequent evidence, uh, by listening to the uh, telephone recordings uh, of uh, Mr. Alosha speaking mm -hmm. to his CEO, mm -hmm. um, uh, confirms that Mr. Alosha had um, sensitive information, price sensitive information. Uh, market sensitive information uh, and of course it is the Prime Minister who in Parliament said that 
I instructed the change in the way the bonds were issued. And he then went on to say that there was corruption in the previous, uh, under the previous administration and that this is what the primary dealers are saying. Uh, when asked if uh, he knew who these primary dealers are, Ajna Mahindran says, I don't know. You ask the PM. You know, so, yep. so there you are. The, the country, I think, has a right to know about all these Indeed. things. Indeed, I agree with you. And going on this, this question of, uh, of corruption of the previous regime, slightly digressing from uh, up, yeah. up at subject of the board yeah. to, to, to uh, other areas that, that, that uh, require, I believe, require discussion. This corruption that was referred, as you say, by yeah. Andrew, to, to the previous regime, brings me to this question, the whole question that the country is now discussing, yeah. which is the proposed amendments to the constitution. Yeah. Right? Uh, now, the, 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 the corruption and despotism, nepotism that was seen by the previous regime, which most of us uh, got engaged in, uh, and, and with that silent revolution done by the people, by no single political party, as I always say, by the people on the 8th of January 2015. Now, that was to overthrow an executive presidency, yeah. which at that time, by the 18th Amendment, was could go on and on and on. Remember? Yeah, yes. Unending term of office. Yeah. Right? Which uh, overtly people saw abusing the office, being being draconian, bringing chief justices and impeaching them, you know, that, that sort of system was what the people overthrew for us. So yeah. the, the corruption and all of that that the that you referred to of a previous regime includes the executive presidency. Now my question, the question arises to me now. The his excellence is the present president. Yeah. Who we see, number one, all those several of those powers we have curtailed in the nineteenth amendment as he said. Yeah. Right? We have, we have, in fact, even made the president, his excellence president, answerable to the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. right, for acts done. Yeah. Now, under such a, such a, uh, a sort of a, uh, an organized system or, or, a, or, a, or a, uh, a system where his excellence, the president's office is also under scrutiny, yeah. do, are we still talking of an executive president of the previous nature who we want to change now? That's my question. Yeah. So when you say change ex or abolish executive presidency, yeah. the people were looking at a system previously. Indeed. Do the, now the people must decide, do we want to abolish the present executive presidency? Yes. See, in January 2015, they gave their mandate to, I don't actually believe, we can discuss that later about the abolition of executive presidency, whether the people actually mandated that by 66.2 million, as they say. That's yeah. another question. That's we, claim that we, we that's claim, say. but we can discuss. I, I don't agree with that. Yeah. But before going into any of that, the system of executive presidency that the people saw then yeah. has changed since January 2015. Right. So do we still, be, and as the, as the main uh, SLFP, the concomitant party of this uh, government, themselves are saying they don't want to, in this report, which we are discussing, they don't want to abolish the executive presidency. Mm -hmm. So that's a question that, that we need to discuss. And um, uh, our viewers, uh, please send us your questions by SMS, uh, 0772 300 uh, Kindly don't call it, but send us an SMS. Um, <laughs> And um, here's, here's a question that's come through uh, here, Krishmal. Could you please ask this, uh, uh, your legal guest, whether the function of the commission is merely fact-finding, similar to non-summary proceedings where there is no cross-examination? So there is indeed the examination and, and cross-examination of witnesses, but it is a fact-finding inquiry. Yeah. It's a fact-finding inquiry where the commissioners have been authorized under the under a warrant under the hand of his excellency the president to find out the facts pertaining to a certain matter, yes. which is this bond uh, scandal that we talk of. Yeah. But yes, it is inquisitorial. It's it's not it's not a judicial proceeding where uh, there are punitive measures at the end. Where un unlike uh, uh, penal code uh, penal code uh, offence where you can send someone to jail, the ultimately the commissioners will come out with a report in which they will find certain findings. No. So to that extent, it's fact finding as it is inquisitorial. Right. But of course, there is leading and 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 and, this, and hearing of evidence, taking of evidence, and there are sides in in in, in that in that commission who have been allowed to ask questions. Now, what is the relationship between the commissioners uh, and um, the Attorney General? Well, the Attorney General plays an assistance, uh, a part as an so assistant. So is it like a client? Client? Are the commissioners... No, the no. 
the commissioners uh, in a in a in a commission of inquiry play the part of the inquisitors or yeah. those those who are and responsible. So the AG are their the, lawyers. The attorney, no, the AG no. is not their lawyer. The attorney general is there to assist the state. The attorney general is the chief law officer of the state. Right. The attorney general is the chief law officer of the state, and and not just these proceedings. Now, in in the Supreme Court, where constitutional matters are being deliberated. I think what I'm the, trying to find out. Now let let me yes. just finish this. The AG comes as a micus. Oh, an assistant to court right. to assist in that fact-finding process. Right. Now, I think what I was trying to find out is whether there is provision or whether the system would allow uh, the commissioners to say to their, to the AG, who's assisting them, say, listen, I don't want you to ask that because you're not assisting. We, you're assisting us, so don't ask that. Can they say that? Well, that's highly speculative for us, and I, I wouldn't want to go yeah. there. Uh, what the commissioners can do, I will say this, what the commissioners can do and the process of inquiry set out in the Commissions of Inquiry Act, yeah. and what they must inquire and how they must do it on this particular issue is set out in the warrant. And there is no strict law that says that a commissioner can direct or not can not direct uh, the attorney general's officer to ask a question or not to ask a question. Yeah. But of course, the entire process is in the hands of the commissioners. And at some point, if they feel that things are getting out of hand, yeah. they will of course say, "Look, I think that we've gone on that line of questioning enough. Can we uh, have can we have the facts on this particular point of issue?" Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, and similarly, if they if they feel that the, some questions have not been asked on on what they they want to inquire into, yeah. they can certainly look, uh, counsel. Can you uh, perhaps uh, answer this question? Uh, ask, or they can directly ask the witness. Uh, can you answer this question? So, so uh, to that extent, it's fact finding and inquisitorial. I see. Now then, uh, we've got ten minutes. So let's ask you about um, this constitution. Yeah. Who wants this? Yeah, <laughs> precisely my question. Now, I everyone says that the people want a constitution. I think that's why. Well, and then uh, I was just reminded by one of our young producers who's yeah. also studying uh, the law, yeah. um, who said to me, he said, this is not a draft. This is some document. Yeah, so, so before we get to that, can you answer the, the other question of who wants a constitution? Yes, now, who, who wants it? Indeed, I dare say the country, all of us, want a system of governance that yeah. will alleviate most of our problems, if not all of it. Yeah. If there are questions by of the minorities that need uh, a solution, indeed we want a system that, that will uh, answer all of that. Yeah. But those reasons that we aspirants, the people have for wanting a constitution and what the government or the Honorable Prime Minister or His Excellency the President or the Ministers may have or bring a, or indeed Chief Ministers of a province may have for wanting a constitution, I believe, yeah. must be dissected and taken. Yeah. Because all we hear for yeah. us, yeah. primarily all we hear are power sharing, okay? Yeah. How much of land power can a chief minister have? Yeah. As opposed to how much of that power can we interpose on as a central government? Now, you remember, these are all, they are talking of powers for a man in political office in some province, or the parliamentarians here, how much of police powers? Now, my question is, are these the people's questions? Mm -hmm. Is that what the people want to consider? I mean, do the, um, some, some, for example, someone is saying that you can't really say that by a, by a constitutional amendment you're trying to give an answer to the only the Tamil minority in the north because apparently, I don't know how, but the figures are correct, of 32 to 34 percent of Tamils actually are resident in the north. The others are spread out over the country. So then, whose grievances are we trying to alleviate by a constitution, if that is so? Mm. Because then it's only the Tamil politicians yeah. who want, who have certain demands who we are trying to address by a constitutional amendment. Does that, does that necessarily mean that we are answering the Tamil minority? That's, that's another question. Yeah. Indeed, tell me, yes, I dare say by being a minority, minorities may have different kinds of issues. But across the board, the entire country, do we have a proper system of health? Do you have a proper system of education? Can we afford to live on the on the meager salary that 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 are that are general public servants earn? Aren't these questions that pertain to the entire country and not just a minority or a majority? Do we not try to find answers to those? So my question is giving entire priority to a constitutional amendment that, as you say, a report. I'll come to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. Are we not trying to forget the uh, forget the questions that really need answer? For example, let me put it the other way. If you really give a proper kind of living 
and a secured health system, education system and economic system to people in the north or east or south or whatever. Do you think that they still want to consider women? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now that's a valid question. Yeah. That's a valid question which we must find as a people, we must find the answer. So these constitutional amendments are first for whom, for whose benefit is what we must first ask. Then for us, uh, the question put by your young uh, law student, yeah. this is indeed not even an amendment. Mm -hmm. And we are asked to comment on this for what? And pray tell me how? This is an interim report of the of the interim uh, of the steering committee, yeah. and we are being asked to comment on it. Now, yeah. tell me how. What is the process that that we are? To, and last time we raised this issue for us, yeah. I, I think uh, someone uh, sent me a message yeah. saying that no, no. How, okay, now how we are supposed to comment this? We are supposed to go and talk to our member of parliament and tell the member of parliament these are the questions we have on this report to go and ask that in parliament. Pray tell me Sri Lanka at such a level of democracy where our persons can go in the evening and chat to the MP if they can actually find him yeah. and say now look chap over a cup of coffee say now this uh, provision on principles of subsidiarity and province to the primary to devolution I want to discuss with you yeah. MP can you go and raise this matter in parliament do you think we are at that level of democracy yeah. I mean this is a joke the utterly, utterly ridiculous state people must be shown a draft constitution not some interim report yes. and then people should be asked well do you agree with this or not yeah that's how that's how you want this is this to me in my opinion this doesn't even warrant a discussion because one there is no way that we can discuss it I mean, our people run behind politicians for us as you know when a politician comes to their little village comes to open some toilet yeah. the fellows the little fellows big fellows they all run behind and put garlands and all that that level of democracy in our country where the politician thinks that he is walking on heaven and this poor man is trying to live a day. Yeah. Do you think that our people can go and have a chat with him over a cup of coffee and discuss the constitutional amendment? Um, uh, this is an interesting uh, point uh, raised by a viewer who says, same way that the president's term is defined, parliamentarians' time should also be defined without staying on for 40 years. <laughs> Good suggestion. Uh, I do not know how the principles of democracy will, will permit that. Right. Because the presidential term of office is restricted for, for certain reasons that he is the executive, head of the executive. An office. Another one, this is, uh, might, might be good for you to answer. So what have our politicians done for our people after sending the Brits away? Things are even worse. No standards, no ethics, etc. I agree with you. That's <laughs> a very simple answer. I agree with you. And so much so, I told Farah sometime earlier that we're actually discussing, uh, my family and I, on personal note, are discussing as to why we left uh, uh, a certain place and came back to Sri Lanka long before the war was over. We came to a country with the war, thinking that we can do things. Somebody else says to you, I fully agree with you. If the good governance experience in the country, in this country, there is no requirement of devolution of power in the country. Thank you. And uh, another one says, do you mean to say that there are no problems or issues faced by the minorities? Certainly not. That's why I said that you should have heard my entire sentence, not half of the sentence. Yeah. What I said was that there may be distinct issues faced by minorities which we need to address. And I said that. So I don't think I need to labor that point anymore. I said that. I and then is there, what is the legal requirement? Please ask Mr. C.W. where the president and elected representatives are expected to act with due diligence in their duties. Of course, they, I mean, that, that goes without saying. Goes you don't without. need to put in a law for that. Yeah. That goes without saying and the constitution has several provisions where you are expected to, uh, to perform uh, your duties to the best of your ability. The most important part is the oath of office that we take. Even we as lawyers take the uh, assume an oath of office on the constitution that we will be true to the republic and, and the principle that it stands and yeah. that we will not espouse the creation of a separate state and how we will do our duty diligently. All that is, is, is expected of a public officer. So that goes without saying. But for us, can we quickly go to, to, Please the, do. You on, 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 yeah, on, on this report? Is that all I have? I wish we could discuss it a lot. Yeah. Now, then, that's the, the, extra, the rest of the questions are. Now, yeah, now we, we are discussing only unitary state and the state of religion. In yeah. this interim report, there are so many other areas that need discussion. Yeah. If we are indeed to discuss this. So, yeah. first point is this is not a constitutional amendment, but even if we are to discuss the report. And then the answer to our question earlier was this is to be read with the other subcommittee reports, the six subcommittee reports. My question is there are serious suggestions on, for example, subcommittee on finance. Yeah. I have not seen a single discussion on these very valid observation of the financial commission, economic upliftment, alleviation of poverty. We are not discussing that. Then there is a report of subcommittee of public service reforms. Right. Which, 
I mean, we are, we are, where are we discussing this? So I, I say there is a lot to discuss. Yeah. Lot to discuss. And, 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 and we are, I think, all going after a red herring, uh, just keeping on discussions until government plays merry governing, uh, r- running with their trips all over the countryside and, and having and their board. parties and for board. another four years until they come to another term. Krishmal Wanasuri, thank you very much. Thank you to all you viewers for so many questions. Uh, but it looks like you're going to have to come up on one of our longer programs, <laughs> uh, Face the Nation, perhaps, which Good broadcasts on Monday. After, straight after the news at 9.30. It goes on for two hours, two wonderful hours, in which you can, uh, of course, you can send Shami Rasuddin questions too at that and time. And we can answer them. We can do. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks for us. Good to be here. And uh, that's it from uh, Newsline on Friday, October the 27th, 2017. We remember all those people who, have, uh, who are facing challenging and tragic uh, circumstances, as we always do. Uh, our prayers are with everyone, and of course, uh, we represent the people's uh, aspirations, their hopes, and we keep you informed. Take care. God bless. News First Newsline with Faraz Shaukatali.